Hi guys. Mm. Hi guys, how's everybody doing? Um Hi. Hello. Um, happy February 1st. Happy Valentine's Day month. Happy Black History Month. Happy birthday to all the February uh, babies out there. What sign are we in right now? Scorpio? No, no, no. That comes after Libra. It goes Aquarius. I think Pisces. Yeah, nope. Sagittarius? No, no, no. Come on, Jamie. It's Aquarius. Still Aquarius. All right. Still Aquarius. Um, well, duh, Jamie, you knew that. Michael's an Aquarius. Hello. What a dumb question. Anyway, um, happy uh, February, everybody. I am at work with Jackson, as you can tell. And um, so much going on. So many exciting things to share with you. Um, first being that um, Jackson and I are having a great day, aren't we? Always. Well, okay, he's a lot more optimistic than I am. I wouldn't say always, but right now feels yes, good. We are. Um, we're having a good day and we're just here working and um, I want to tell you a secret. So I'm going to whisper it in your ear. Happy birthday, Terry. Okay? Ready? Come close. Closer. Closer. I got my LLC for my coffee shop yesterday. So exciting. So... <clears throat> A lot of announcements so you guys can follow this journey. I'm very excited. Um, I have a lot to do and I'm terrified, but I'm very excited. So anyway, I, uh, ground, is tomorrow Groundhog Day? It is. Phil <laughs> Phil? Phil Connors? It's my favorite. <laughs> Um, okay. So once again, I know I say this every day, but thank you to everybody who purchased anything from State of Style Jewelry without giving away all of her private business. You guys are really helping Mary and I cannot tell you how much that warms my heart. So you're so pretty chewing gum is not sorry. <laughs> Imagine writing that to someone on the internet. Imagine feeling so compelled, like, wait, I have to tell her that ch chewing gum is not pretty. <laughs> yeah. The power of Christ compels you. Anyway, um, okay, so I was, I read this thing this morning on girls sports where this female coach, um, was talking about how female athletes are always told to like toughen up and what that does, why the chewing gum? Oh, Jesus H. Fucking Pelham. Oh, Lord. 
Jesus, take the wheel. Take it from my hand. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. I'm literally right now going to a fucking safe space right now. I'm going to a safe space in my mind. Okay. So, <clears throat> thanks, James. So, anyway, in this article, um, the coach was talking about how... Um, girls are often told to toughen up and their emotions are typically written off um, by saying like, you're so hormonal. And a lot of times these girls at this age don't even know what you're so hormonal. Um, oh my God. And I got to block James. God, James, we were so close. Um, a lot of times girls this age don't even understand what you're so hormonal means. So it becomes a bad thing for them. It becomes a bad thing. Something that is innately part of their, um, all right. I am going to ask kindly if you care about me at all, that you will just stop with the comments. It's so passive aggressive. Just just like just like if you if I'm chewing gum and it isn't for you, just log off. Like it's and I don't need you to say like much better. Now you're gorgeous. Like my mother does that. My mother does that to me. Move your hair out of your face and then you much better. Like just ugh. It, it's so fucking triggering. Um, anyway, uh, I bet Oprah doesn't chew gum. Go to Oprah.com and I guarantee Oprah doesn't chew gum. She's way classier than me. Um, anyway, something that is innately part of the female makeup, genetic, we start telling girls at 13, you're so hormonal. Like it's a bad thing. Here's the thing. We have to deal with hormones which allow us to love and nurture and breastfeed and have babies and menstruate and ovulate and do all of these metaphysical things that God intended us to be able to do suddenly becomes the reason that our kids, our girls, our women can't have a feeling about anything. As soon as we have a feeling we're so hormonal, our mothers are so hormonal, our grandmothers are so hormonal. It's like from the time a girl is old enough to have a thought or a feeling, she's too hormonal. And, you know, it's interesting that we, we want everybody to toughen up. I was reading the article about the young girl who, who committed suicide, the uh, Miss USA or Miss... I think she was Miss USA. Anyway, and everyone was talking about how just two weeks before she committed suicide, she was interviewing Denzel Washington and she was laughing. And by the way, suicide is not always from mental illness. Suicide can be from literally a, sh a broken heart. Suicide can be from... Uh, it can be situational. Something can happen. You can learn something. Something can happen to you. It's not always like decades of mental illness that lead to suicide. And if you look at this girl on the outside, she had so much going for her perceived, right? But obviously there were things that she couldn't handle, which breaks my heart, by the way. Like I cannot even tell you, but I was thinking about like, how, like we're told to like, just be tough and toughen up and, and you're so hormonal. And we, we, from such a young age, it's like, we don't even fully understand why we feel the way we feel. And then we're afraid to go to people and say, I'm feeling out of sorts. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling whatever, because we're supposed to be tough. 
Well, what if we just created boundaries around ourselves that allowed us to stay vulnerable, that allowed us to stay feeling, that allowed us to stay kind and loving and trusting instead of always feeling like we have to be so tough with people. You know, and so I, I you know, I, I've talked about this regarding my son, you know, remember when he was playing basketball and he got hit in the head and, and, and someone said, you need to toughen that boy up. And I was like, I will funk you up. Right. Um, I think that forcing listen, like I struggle, I really do toggle the line of like, okay, Jamie, you grew up in the like walk it off era of the 80s and you're fine. But like, am I really fine? Am I? Because I grew up fighting everybody who gave me a dirty look. I grew up fighting anybody who said anything that pissed me off. I punched first. I apologized later. I was so aggressive and so defensive. So am I really okay? I don't know. How do you define okay? Because I grew up in the 80s where no matter what you felt or whatever it was, there was no safe space. My sisters made fun of me, which that was their job. My mother was good in some ways and other ways was the reason I was crying. But like we were just toughing it up, you know, walk it off. Stop cry, Stop your crying or I'll give you something to cry about. It was all of that. And like some people are like, oh, this generation is so coddled. But you know what? In some ways they are coddled, right? But I do think they are a more compassionate generation. Like as a whole, I just think they have more compassion because there's more conversation like this. I know in my house... There is a much, look, I, I am a like lock it up when I know my kids are just like bullshitting. But when I, when I can see that they are hurting or like really need to feel, I allow them space to feel. Many of nights I have held Charlie in my arms and let her cry. Charlie is such an emotional, sympathetic, empathetic human being. Like, I feel like if Charlie was an animal, she would be like a dog or an orangutan. Like something that understands that somebody else is hurting. And I have held Charlie and just said to her, it's okay, baby. Cry. Cry. And I hold her and I rock her and I just let her cry and feel all the things. It doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm not annoyed by hormones or feelings or whatever. Uh, I'm annoyed by nagging and disrespect, but I'm not annoyed about feelings and stuff. So I think like what my goal for this conversation is to just say, like, instead of forcing people to toughen up, maybe we teach them how to create boundaries around themselves that allow them to stay nurturing and kind and trusting and good and loving because like, isn't that what we're supposed to be for each other? I don't know. I'm just going to tell you that I would never want my, any of my children to be as angry as I was. I just, that would break my heart. Um, and by the way, Erica Sim Simon Fisher, I am so sorry that someone said that to you. That is not okay. That is incredibly damaging. I wish I could tell you she had good reason, but unfortunately that was their generation. They thought that that was the way you got somebody to, mo to motivate someone to lose weight. We now know that that is not at all the way you do it. But I just want you to know that I'm very sorry that your grandmother said those things to you. Um, and if you cry or you feel, 
and people tell you you're too much, then you tell them, no, you're not enough. Like I need somebody who feels more. I need a more feeling person. That's what I need. And it's okay to set boundaries like that. It's okay to say like, no, 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 no. I don't need a robot person. I don't need someone who's been told so many times that they can't express themselves or they need to toughen up that they think they need to shame me into becoming robotic. I don't want to be robotic. Okay? I don't. Robotic people don't have good orgasms. This is true. People who don't feel, people who never cry, people who are fucking rigid, they come silently. <laughs> who the fuck wants that? Who wants silent orgasms that don't feel like anything? Not me. Not me. I want loud, awesome, phenomenal orgasms. That's what I want. Okay. So, um, if you are with somebody who can't ever express anything, I guarantee their orgasm sucks. Period. That's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Exactly, Roger. We love Roger. Um, anyway, I love you guys very much. And I truly hope that you have a great, great day. Do not change, my dolly. I shall not, Paula. <laughs>